Welcome back, you guys, to Those Four Girls. My name is Lainey Sullivan. I'm your host, and I actually help you create and grow your, or help, help you create and manage your growth strategies for your business. So I am excited to chat with these ladies today. I have the queens of YouTube, and they're both out of Vegas. So we decided that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, and they know all about it, and you're going to have to pay them off for them not to tell your secret. <laughs> So we've got Cheryl Locke, and she runs Hot Blog Tips on YouTube, and she also runs Fuzzy Wuzzy Anna Pals. Hi, Cheryl. And we've got Renee Christine, who has Rich Mom Business, and her YouTube channel actually is Rich Mom Business. So you guys have some really great um, audiences. You guys have some. You guys have been on YouTube for a few years now, since it started. I know Cheryl, you've been on it for a while. Yeah, I've been I've been making videos a, at least three years, so it's not been forever. There was cat <laughs> videos long before I got there. Cat videos long before Cheryl got there. <laughs> and then Renee, how long have you been running your your account on YouTube? Uh, for a little over two years now. Very nice. So you guys have had the experience of the changes, the ups and the downs, the growth, the now the merger of YouTube and Google Plus. So let's talk about why YouTube? I love YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is awesome for any business. Like, if you want a business, you can't really do it properly online now without YouTube. It's, it's a, a lot harder without it, just because it helps you get to the top of other search engines easier. And people can see your face, so they can relate to you as a person instead of like a big corporation. Yeah, I think it adds an element that, that you can't get from blogging, from writing, from anything else. I mean, you watch a TV show and you get more connected with that character than you do just from maybe reading a book when you can see it, hear their voice, and afterwards you hear that voice in everything they say. So I think it just adds a huge element to your business that if you're not there you're really missing out and I think that's you know I, I think people really don't realize that the that there is power in YouTube and and that it is a search engine let's talk about the fact that it's a search engine like it's not just for videos like not it's not just a music place to play you know music videos right there's more to YouTube than just music videos but it's not just a search engine it is the search engine because you figure it's the second largest search engine in the world, great, fine, whatever. But when you make a YouTube video, it can be found on Google.com. It can be found on Google.com video search. It can be found on YouTube search. That video gets found on Yahoo, Bing, maybe AOL if anybody still uses that. So while it's a search engine in itself, it has the ability to spread through all the other search engines, which makes it like the superpower. I, I'm not a fan of YouTube, though. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, it's awesome sauce. It does work that way, and it's one of the easiest ways to get your message to spread, especially because, not just because of what she said, but because of supply versus demand. There are are so many more people watching the videos than make the videos so it not only spreads to all these different search engines but there aren't that I know there's like a million people making videos every day but of how many more people are watching those videos how many videos have you made this week versus watched that supply versus demand is always present and so that's why YouTube also it's easier to get an audience on YouTube even now with it being more saturated than by just doing a blog on Google and you have the technical behind that, just to get nerdy here for a second. Um, YouTube makes it so easy that you as a viewer don't have to worry about if you want to watch it in 720 or 360, YouTube automatically recognizes how fast your internet is and downsizes the video for you. That's why I prefer YouTube for my standard stuff than Vimeo, because Vimeo doesn't do it. And my client is like, Oh, I can't watch it. I just get this spinning wheel and it doesn't stop. Yeah, guess what? If I'm doing putting the video on YouTube, it automatically recognizes how fast the internet of the viewer is and it downsizes the video so they can watch it without a problem. And this is why I love Yvonne because she brings the technical aspect 
to the conversation for all of us. <laughs> so thank you, Yvonne. <laughs> I'm trying to be not too nerdy. I'm trying to keep it low shelf. No, no, no. It was per it was perfect because those are the things that that I think are important for everybody when you're trying to figure out if you do use Vimeo or YouTube or what other what I don't even know other options. I'm not. I'm like I know YouTube and I know Vimeo and other outside of that. I'm like, what's and the there are there's a huge benefit to using other you other video hosting sites rather than just YouTube. I mean. I would never tell someone not to use those, but I would say to use them in conjunction with YouTube. So it, it you can put your videos more places, optimize in different ways, and reach different places with the other platforms. So to say not to use the other platforms wouldn't come out of my mouth, but I'd start with YouTube and, and make that a mainstay first. I agree with that. You can put your video everywhere. I embed mine in my blogs and... You know, you share them on every social media site. You do all of that, but if you forget, if you miss the YouTube part of it, you're missing the main connector that can spread and go viral. So, I know that Chris, um, Renee, you use YouTube to drive people to your website. You have nine thousand. You're almost a ninety-one hundred um, subscribers on YouTube. So, you guys, this is why Renee is on the show today. She has ninety-one hundred subscribers to her YouTube channel. She has over 600,000 views on her videos, and she's got, how many videos do you have, 100 and, how many? I have, I have over 500 videos. Okay, I was going to say, oh yeah, and actually, no, you're over 600 now. Am I? <laughs> I oh. stopped your channel. Yes. <laughs> I did. So, Gosh. yeah, so you're over 600 videos, so tell me, um, so tell me, how did you start building an audience and and you're driving your audience from YouTube to your website? Right. Well, first, to get an audience on YouTube, it, it is a little bit more saturated. So you do need to kind of I almost want to call it like pull a stunt, which is why I video blogged for 365 days while I built Rich Mom Business. It was like nothing and my first video was like, oh, "So I'm going to build this site. I hope it works out." You know. And so that stunt, people watched to see if I could actually do it. They were kind of curious if I was going to fall on my face. And then after the 365, then people, oh, she did it. Like, for real. Couldn't believe it. I didn't even miss a day, not even Christmas or my birthday. But part of that I learned halfway through is that you're missing out on so much if you don't drive people somewhere to a site and capture their emails. So the subscribers on YouTube, it's fabulous, but it's even better if you use YouTube as a vehicle to get them to opt into your site. Because then then my views triple on YouTube because I can email them and say, hey, a new video is out, instead of relying on them visiting YouTube that day and happen to see my video. And I, I'm a subscriber to to her channel and to her email list. so. I get, you know, the notices and they're not spammy and I suggest everybody watch and go sign up so you don't miss any of Renee's important videos. And uh, so I, she needs 10,000 subscribers on YouTube today. Let's show people how to do this. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, what Renee is mentioning feeds perfectly back into a former Those for Girls show, you got to own your content. Yes, YouTube is probably not going to go away. It's been around long enough. But it's not yours. You don't own it. Yeah, it's true. You you know, you want to drive them back to your website. And we've been preaching this all year on T4G. We started in February and March and and I've noticed throughout the the year people have been, you know, talking about it as well. But we've been talking about this all year because as a community, we want you to grow your audience and use all the tools in your your kit to do that. And YouTube is definitely one of those. So, ladies, um, well, actually, Cheryl, let's talk about your channels. You have two that are two diabolically opposed channels. Um, you have Fuzzy Wuzzy Fuzzy Wuzzy Annapals with Granny. Uh, so if you guys don't know Granny Fran, you need to go watch Hollywood Circles with Michael Daniels last week and go learn about Granny Fran. But she has a pup, Granny Fran's a puppet, and she talks about animals. And then you have Hot Blog Tips, which is how-tos on lots of different things. So let's talk about your channels. You've, got, you've done over 800 videos with your clients and your personal channels that you manage. 
And most of that started with uh, actually another channel that I don't even use anymore just to find out how to do video because I wanted to be able to get a little picture to show up in a Google search. So I couldn't get that on my own SEO to my site, so I decided to use video. And, and from there, it was just let's test it, see what happens, what can we do with it. And I take now a puppet and see how I can do with little kid videos for kids so young that they're not even allowed to have a YouTube channel. And then the hot blog tips, that's because I like to, to show people how to do things. So that's actually Brian's, that's Brian's channel, but he doesn't get to do anything on it. <laughs> <laughs> because Cheryl has taken over his channel. <laughs> so I, that's I awesome. Let him do something. But when they started Hangouts on Air with uh, Google Plus way back, I said, let's go try this out. And that was something that started bringing a lot of people in was the Hangouts on Air. And Hangouts on Air is, is obviously a good way to start. But, I, you know, Cheryl's been helping us with those four girls in our YouTube channel. And if you guys have noticed, we're sharing a lot more YouTube videos for a reason. So do we want to do we want to share the secret sauce on why we want to share? You mean Cheryl's baseball bat on your head? Yeah, <laughs> Cheryl has a baseball bat too, you guys. So, so do we want to share the secret sauce of why you want to share YouTube videos instead of a Google Plus event page? Because a Google Plus event page is useless once the bit once the show is over. It's not going to be searchable. So you want to share that video so that you're getting the interaction, the comments, it, it's going to build your channel. If you're just sharing that event page that's going to sit in the dark, it's not going to do you a lot of good. Start taking that video itself once it's uploaded and start spreading it around. And I and this is why, Renee, I'm assuming that you do, when you put a video up, you send an email out to your subscribers. Oh, yeah. If you do everything instant, like one big combustion type ball on all your social media plus your email, that's how that's what makes things go viral. So, or at least you have a better shot of it going viral. So, if I'm sending stuff out on my Facebook and Twitter, if I do it all at the same time plus send an email and get enough people to view it within that first hour, there's more of a chance of it being even bigger on the list of YouTube for things as well. What Renee does with her live shows that I think is awesome, and I hadn't seen it done until I went to one of her, her, we went to her blog to watch the live show, and her, you tweet out comments with a specialty hashtag, and that just helps spread it, because of course it's going through people's Twitter streams for whoever's commenting, and they're like, you know, when you're making good comments, they want to go check it out. And so I think that's ingenious that she's using a live event rather than an event page on Google Plus, but where her audience is on Twitter and having it spread that way. Yeah, I kind of call it like a Twitter chat on crack because <laughs> it's one big Twitter chat but with a live event on Google and it's all embedded in my blog. So there's more of a chance of people opting in in my blog to see it all. It just, once again, makes that combustible um, awesome sauce. And right there. To, to her things, not on a Google Plus event page. She's bringing them in. I embed it on my blog, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's just, I think that's awesome. I do too, and I, I'm like, how can we do this on those four girls without, you know, like, I've been wanting to drive traffic away from Google events, sorry guys, to our audience, because this is powerful. As as a business owner, as a community, how, whomever you are as an individual, if you can get people going to your website and watching your video, tweeting with other audience members, that's where your power is. That's where your audience is. That's where you want them to be. So, you know, I, I encourage everybody to start really diving into YouTube and really merging, you know, YouTube and Twitter and everything together on your website. And these ladies, all of them, actually can help you do that, which is amazing. So Evie's got your website, and Renee and Cheryl have your YouTube. <laughs> so I love right. the nerdiness that's going on right now, and I would love to jump into it just for a second. 
um, the conversation is going on that there is that thing that Vimeo has better quality than YouTube. Yes, there's some compression going on that makes the video a little bit smaller, but guess what? There is a little icon on the bottom, and if the owner of the video uploaded it at 1080 by 720, which means it's that big a video instead of that big a video, you can switch it up to the big quality, and it's just as good as Vimeo. So That's I true. don't think that there's that much big a quality difference between Vimeo and YouTube. Vimeo, you're going to get the quality that you that you can get. I mean, if you're watching it on a phone, and the picture's this freaking big, really, are you going to notice that little bit of quality? I doubt it. Yeah. I, Most people care more about sound, it seems, too. Yes. As long as your sound is good, as long as your video's not totally pixelated where you can't even like see what's in it, you're going to be just fine with that. Actually, my viewers prefer not to see me. That's why <laughs> I got a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Pay attention to your audience. So uh, Cheryl's <laughs> viewers don't want to see her, but she's got a great radio voice. <laughs> <laughs> and Renee puts together these great, quirky, random videos that you're like, what is she going to do next? <laughs> so you've got to figure out the kind of audience that you want to go after. And it's the same with every social media channel. But now you've got video in front of you. Now you've got them watching you. So you've got to figure out what they want and what you want as an audience. And then you've got to give it to them. And then keep the consistency of it. And consistency is a big, big deal. It really Which is. I'm, yeah, on my channels, I'm terrible about it because I get busy doing other people's stuff. But consistency, if you're just going to throw one video out there, and say, oh, maybe it'll go viral, and when it doesn't, you say, oh, this doesn't work. Well, best of luck to you on everything you go to do in life. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do it in steps. A lot of people think that, you know, their goal is to go viral. That happens so little. Your goal is to get to the biggest audience you can, but really, you, you got to drip feed your YouTube channel. There's no like massive growth unless you do something like a stunt, like be on those four girls or something. <laughs> well, this and is it. What does viral help you? Viral usually is a one-hit wonder, and then. And viral doesn't usually sell. It's I mean, true. yeah, and there's no viral science means, behind it. Yeah, you get you get a million viewers, but it there's nothing to it. You really want, and then they're all over the place. You really want to get to your target market. I, I say target market like 30 times a day. You got to yep. focus on who you want to, and that's why we have like SEO and adding tags and keywords and stuff. That's for your target market. That's who you want to reach. You don't, viral's cool, but it's, it get you far. Granny Fran would love to have a viral video. She really would because she thinks that would be cool, but it's not going to happen probably. But like Renee said, your target audience, if if your video is getting 100 views, but those 100 views are clicking through to your site and they're purchasing or clicking through to your site and signing up for your email newsletters or whatever it is you want them to do, then those 100 people are far more valuable than a million people that just watch partway through and click off. A view means about this much if they're not watching and taking action. And I, I want to talk about, well, there's a couple different directions I want to go with this because Renee went right into it. She talked about basically optimization, tags, keywords, and all that fun stuff. So let's dive into that and then we'll dive into the next piece after. Okay. Uh, I love SEO and I'm totally a nerd when it comes to it. I've been studying it since 2006. So like, that's kind of my craft. And I love that YouTube makes SEO, and that's for people who are like, what's SEO? That's search engine optimization. That's kind of like the magic juice that puts your blog or your video to the top of Google or YouTube or any search engine, Etsy, eBay, all of those. If you optimize it, you can get higher than your competitors, which is the ultimate goal, right? So a lot of people will either advertise or they'll try to find other means 
you know, post stuff on Facebook to try to get sales, but ultimately, when I built a six-figure stationary business, the reason I got a lot of sales was because I was at the top of the search engines right when people were searching to buy. So you want your videos to be at the top of YouTube right when people have a problem and you're trying to solve it through that video. And if you can solve their problem even just a little bit and then say, go here for the extra, you know, good stuff and opt in, they will. Like last week I put up a, a website training and it was three hours long and it took me 40 hours of work to put it up. But I said in right in the video like 30 times, go here to get like an extra web kit with graphics and stuff to go with the tutorial. And I've had like 50 opt-ins since like for the last three or four days just from that. But had I done the same thing two years ago when I just started, I would be sitting a lot better here today. But I didn't know that. I didn't know, you know, start with the video and then capture their emails for the rest because I have like an EC WID big long technical thing see I'm as nerdy as Yvonne and I have like a MailChimp thing but I, I so I have like all these playlists of huge tutorials on YouTube and they get so many views but I don't get any results from them because people just come and watch and they you know it solves their problem they're happy but I don't get anything out of it you know you've got to get something out of it so yeah, it's really important to make sure that it's optimized and then you solve a problem right in their hour of need. So make sure your keywords are actually like solving a problem, not just hot blonde. And then they watch your video because you're a hot blonde. <laughs> I love that. I have never had that blonde. happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that for my next next headline though, hot blonde, and, and then I'm yeah. just going to show a blank screen. <laughs> yeah. It's worthless keywords. Trust me on that. <laughs> oh, well, Cheryl has lots of rants about keywords and tags and all that kind of stuff. Um, would you care to share? Which rant would you like? One that I've already yelled at you about or a new one? <laughs> share. Whatever, um, whatever your heart desires. I just say that for people doing YouTube, when it comes to your metadata, which is your title, your tags, and your descriptions, be aware that YouTube is not not dumb and stupid and can be easily misguided. I mean, they're starting to really crack down on the SEO end of metadata, and they're watching what you do. So if you're going to try to game it with shoving in your keywords with using hashtags in a title or in your description, look, if you haven't been smacked down, I foresee it coming very, very soon. So take the time to do things right. You To have a view just because you have a misleading title or have stuffed keywords in, that view means nothing, like I said. If they come and they watch for 10 seconds, it may count as a view, but they're not getting your message, and so it's worthless. Don't mess with your SEO. Stick to your guidelines so that in a year from now when they get even tighter on their standards for your metadata you're not having to go back and change 600 videos because you tried to play some stupid game and now it's caught up with you do it right the first time and keep moving forward and that's that's what I'm telling people on websites too don't don't play the games we will do what makes sense and you're always gonna get your search engine optimization out of it without getting bashed in the head. If you are trying to just play the game, guess what? It'll catch up. It does. It definitely catches up to you. And and this is why and I think a lot a lot of people don't actually know that they're playing the game. I think there's a lot of people that who just they're ignorant and not because they're stupid, but they just don't know. Like when Cheryl and I started talking, I'll totally out myself. She's like, hey, can I go look at your YouTube channel? I was like, sure, go for it. <laughs> I'm like a little afraid of her. But she goes, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, nothing. Straight up, nothing. I'm not optimizing it right. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing because I don't, I, I'm like, it's on my list of things to do. And I think as business owners, a lot of us have this, it's on my list of things to do. So you want to have somebody like Cheryl, you want to have somebody like Renee, and even Evie go in and say, this is what you need to do, help you set it up, set up a game plan, 
and restructure your YouTube channel because now, from a month ago to now, we're our numbers are completely doubled. Now we're optimizing. Now we're doing a better job. It's I mean that's important. So do it now and we didn't know, so now we know and now we're doing better. So find somebody who can help you figure out what you don't know. You're wasting a lot of time and a lot of your work. Every piece of work that you put in without learning optimization and how to do it properly and how to even market your videos properly because most people they put out a video and just hope something happens. You have to learn how to properly market your piece of content as well. Almost, and you're marketing your piece of content almost more than the work you put in and if you don't learn all of that you're wasting so much time and I speak from total experience on that. I wasted so much time that first year just and it's just all part of learning but that's why you're here so that you don't do that anymore. You should learn optimization like learn it today and we can help you with that. Exactly. Shorten the learning curve today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cheryl, what? do you want to add something? No. I, I, don't, <laughs> no. I have so much I could add, but I'm not. Well, on this point of the show, you guys, we are talking with Renee Christine and Cheryl Locke, and you are listening to those four girls, and we're talking about building an audience on YouTube and really not just building your audience on YouTube but taking your audience that you build on YouTube and driving them to your personal website and again taking them back off of social media to your personal website so you own your list and now we are just we're just diving in we've talked about we've talked about optimization we've talked about why YouTube we've talked about how to use YouTube we've talked about driving people to your website now I want to kind of talk about using YouTube as your channel and kind of watching videos as your channel and sh commenting in YouTube and not actually commenting say in Google Plus. So let's talk about that because that was something that I learned and the power of learning that has been great. And let's go to Cheryl because Cheryl um, gave me a spanking on that one. Lainey likes whenever she gets spankings I think because we do it so <laughs> often to her. My big thing is with YouTube a lot of people tend to, like Renee said, just put a video up and hope for the best, but YouTube is a social network. It's If all you're doing is going to put your video up there and maybe tweet out a link and send it to your grandma, great and fine, that's all you're going to get out of it, but it's a social network and this means you need to be going and finding other videos similar to yours, leaving good comments, like bloggers know this, they do it with blogging you do it in your communities on your social networks or in your your other places you're at Facebook groups what have you and YouTube is the same way because every time you are on YouTube and you watch a video you can leave a well most of them you can leave a comment unless they've closed them you have the option of sharing it on Google Plus when you do this so not only is your name and a link to your channel going to be under that video on YouTube, if you share it to Google Plus, it's also going to go out to your Google Plus stream and you can have it all there. So you're spreading that video and you're showing people, hey, this is something I'm interested in. And in a roundabout way, it's all building links too. So, I mean, it's a lot to understand. Just know that you have to participate and it's a must do. So Evie has a comment, a question actually from the audience for you. Um. Oh, you actually wanted to pull me up? I pull it. Blah, 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 blah. There is the German accent again. <laughs> <laughs> so stick to um, your guidelines. Heidi says stick to your guidelines, Cheryl. What are these guidelines? And to save Cheryl's bum here for a second. There are so many guidelines that we probably could talk about that for the next three hours. To keep it short, as we mentioned before, keep it real and go back, Cheryl. <laughs> and there, there is the YouTube uh, playbook that you can go download for free, and it gives you a lot of the guidelines that your basic things that you need to watch out for. So. I don't have the link right on the top of my head for the playbook, but I can find it, and that'll get you at least some basics going. And, and by the way, Renee, 
Andy took on your your blonde challenge, your hot blonde challenge. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was going to say, um, Andy just said, love your share the love via someone's YouTube channel advice. Um, Andy's very good at that. Andy Lyons goes and she watches shows on YouTube and she shares them on YouTube and comments on them. So she's a great example of how to use your YouTube channel and get your get visibility for you and also you know share the love. So good job, Andy Lyons. So are there any other questions we have from the audience? I want to make sure that we've got those covered. Uh, we don't have comment tracker running because it keeps breaking on us. Yeah, there were a few, but they were covered earlier in the show, so we are fine. All right, perfect. So let's talk about analytics. Ooh, analytics. This is Cheryl's favorite part, you guys. <laughs> and YouTube offers you a huge set of analytics in your back end of your channel and I advise everyone to go back there go to the analytics section start looking around because you're going to find out with the two channels that I can personally talk about with the fuzzy wuzzy and the hot blog tips they are two totally different types of videos they reach totally different audiences in totally different ways one survives on being embedded in other sites uh, fuzzy Wuzzy is total search. I'm sure Renee's is, hers is a lot through her subscribers and either YouTube subscribers or her email subscribers and her followers. So you can get all of that information through your analytics in the back end. And if you're not paying attention, don't just go in and say, I'm going to hit video manager and see how many views I got this week. Because that's not where the important information is you want to know where those views are coming from you you're wanting to know how long they're watching do the views from one place give you a better retention and more sharing than say views from another place so watch all of that just like you would for your website and then take that information to form a plan for that particular channel for that particular video you can also find out are certain titles hitting, are certain topics hitting. I mean, it's just a boatload of information back there. And if you're not finding your way around or having someone look back there and, and find that information for you, you're missing out on a great opportunity to, to build your channel. It's true. And, I, and your analytics shouldn't just stay the same. If you're seeing over like a 12 month period, your analytics are just like this, that's a problem. You need them to go, and it can go kind of like this, but you need it to go like on a steady upward slope or else you've got a problem and need to make some changes. <laughs> and that would be called a big problem. <laughs> that means nobody's <laughs> watching your channel. <laughs> Nobody new is watching well, your even, channel. Yeah, even if you have like 200 views a day, if it's steady, you're not, yeah, you got to go up. <laughs> so do you guys have any tips about um, about YouTube that you want to share that's kind of not into our conversation? I know that we, um, some of the things that we did were, we, you know, Cheryl and I worked on like home page videos, you know, having a video on your, on your YouTube homepage. What about, you know, featuring other channels? What other things can we do to drive more traffic to our targeted? Yeah, one of the biggest ways I found, I learned that um, I grow is by cross promotion. So if I show up on another person's channel and they show up on mine, um, as almost like, but here's the thing, it's like you can't just hijack someone's channel and they hijack yours. You almost have to plan the video together, like if Cheryl and I were going to do something funny with you know, her character and my character and Easy Cheese and whatever. You know, we'd both have to be in the video. We'd swap footage, but both of us would be in both videos, but two separate videos. Am I getting way too techy? <laughs> and as soon as you put them up, my people are going to go watch her to watch, like, the second half. So it really, that's one of the best ways to, it's like cross-pollination, I almost want to call it. <laughs> like, that's the biggest way to get brand new people in a big bunch Ooh, I like it. I, that is a really great tip, you guys. Um, and 
we're we're gonna go play around. I'm excited. <laughs> like my mind is exploding with ideas right now. <laughs> and I think one of the best examples for what Renee was talking about in the podcast world is John Lee Dumas. He is doing exactly that, inviting people and therefore getting their audience and having the reshare. So co-ops are always a great possibility to step into somebody else's circles um, with just taking all Renee and Cheryl just said within the last five minutes. You, you want to have the upgrow to get this upgrow and not just the steady views. You need to step out of your comfort zone. You need to get out of your circle. You need to get out of your Twitter followers, out of your Google Plus followers, out of your YouTube subscribers and step into somebody else's. And instead of just going out there and throwing money at some advertising, the easiest way to do that is to co-op with somebody who already has a certain amount of followers that you can tap into. Now that's I, not always easy to do, especially if you have a yeah. smaller channel. I learned just starting out, it's almost like you want to do the co-op with someone, but you have like a hundred YouTube subscribers, so nobody's going to pay any attention to you because the cr the cross it's like they're not getting anything from it. So this is what you do, okay? You have to exchange something bigger for that cross work, okay? So first you have to have good content, of course, or they're not going to want to even see you. But if you have good content, and even if you have a hundred subscribers, you can tell that person, listen. And this is what I did. Listen, I want to do a co-op with you. I know I don't have a lot of subscribers, but I will do all of the work. Here are two scripts. You literally just press record. I will edit all of them. All you have to do is click upload. If you do all of the work and they only have to like record themselves doing some lines, they're more apt to be like, okay, cool, because it's like for an extra boost of content for their site and they don't have to do any of the work. So if you pull that into your you know, pitch when you're telling them, hey, let's do a double video. I'll do all of the work for you. Just record both videos. They're more apt to to work with you that way. But if you're just like, you know, I get people pitching me all the time saying, hey, let's do let's do a co video thing. Tell me what to do. <laughs> like you, if you're giving me the pitch and you have 100 subscribers, you better have the script, you better have the idea, you better be recording it, you better be editing it, and you better give it to me in MP4 format so that I can literally just click upload and it goes live. <laughs> but if you come to me and you're like, oh, let's do this, I have a great idea. And I say, okay, what's your idea? And they're like, I don't know, you tell me. That <laughs> happens all the time. <laughs> you gotta have to come up with the idea. <laughs> and that was the best, like, smackdown <laughs> ever. <laughs> Don't do it, people. <laughs> your idea. Don't ask for the idea. Come up with it. And Renee might pick you up yeah. on that offer. <laughs> I'm, when we get done here, I'm going to start writing down ideas for Renee. <laughs> hey, don't steal my idea here. I know. I was like, that was my idea. <laughs> you girls so, just Renee, sit over there and be quiet. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right, ladies, any last tips? Because we are wrapping up, and this has been... You guys, we could go on and on because this is there is so much information, but these ladies don't have the time to tell you everything that they need to tell you. And if you want to hire them, please do. I recommend both of them for all of this stuff. I have one short thing for Andy Lyons, actually. Um, the answer to your question, Andy, is way too long about putting the link of your website in there. Go give Cheryl the bus. She can give you the whole rundown like she gave me, and yeah. You want to talk to Cheryl. What was the question, though? The that question was if it's still protocol to put your website link first in the video description. Okay. And I know there is more than just no, so go give Cheryl a call, and she's going to give you the whole rundown on all the nerdiness behind it. Awesome. <laughs> all right, ladies, this has been fun. Any Anything else? Any last things from anybody? I would say just not only participate on YouTube, but don't get stuck in one little site. Don't just think everything's going to go to Google+. Plus. Get out there and try your videos in all, all of your different social networks and see what hits, but try to get them back to your site like Renee does. And I would say don't get stuck on tech stuff. Like You don't need the best camera. You don't need the best mic and all of that. Just, just press record and do it. And I believe that on those four girls, they have a whole techie 
episode that you guys can watch, and I totally encourage you to do that. And I think on the episode, you even Yvonne like made a really cool equipment list and everything for it. So I say, don't get stuck on tech. You got to just make decision and execute. Yep, absolutely. If you guys have tech issues, uh, go to the Geeks. Uh, well, Geek Speak Guide. That's really funny. Um, <laughs> you can go to them too. But you can go to the June episodes of those four girls. We did an entire four-week series on tech and gadgets and goodies and all of that. So you guys can go figure out your technology over there. We don't have time to talk about it today. So Renee, thanks for being on with us. It's been really fun, and we love having you on because you are thanks a little tech nerd. I hope you have me again. <laughs> of course, of course. So where can we connect with you? Where can everybody find you? You guys can find my free silly video series webinars at richmombusiness.com. Sweet. At richmombusiness.com. And make sure you guys go subscribe to her YouTube channel. Just make sure that you do that. And then Cheryl, thanks for being on. And where can oh, we connect with you? Uh, usually Lainey just calls me when she needs to yell at me. But most <laughs> everybody else can find me at CherylLock.com. And... Usually on Google Plus, you can send me a message, and I get back to you if you can't can't get through any other way. Beautiful. And Yvonne, thanks for co-hosting with me today. Where can we connect with you at? Luckily, I've been branding myself pretty good, so just Google Ask Evie, and you'll find me anywhere. Very nice. And you guys can connect with me at LaneySullivan.com. I rebranded myself, thanks to Susan Finch. And next week, we are talking with Jeff C., Manly Pinterest Tips. I'm so excited to have him on. And Danielle Miller. And we are focusing on Pinterest for your business. How can you optimize and use Pinterest to grow your business? There are some tips and some tricks that I've been learning from these folks. And I'm excited to chat with them and really dive into how you can really use it efficiently for your business. It's not just for the ladies anymore. And Jeff is going to really school you guys on how to efficiently use Pinterest for your business. So Manly Pinterest Tips um, is on Mondays. So he's got his Manly Monday. So make sure you guys can tune into Jeff as well. And if you've not subscribed to our Those Four Girls YouTube channel, Go do it right now. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Go do it this very moment, and we appreciate your subscription. You can also follow us on Google+, Twitter, Facebook, oh, Facebook, and then uh, you can go to our website as well. We have Krithika that writes all of our blog posts for us after each show, so you guys can go capture, catch the review that she writes. She's amazing, and we will see you all next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.